Hello, my name is Eric Klein. Today we're going to be talking about some of the updates for KCycle X, including presets, some of the new tone mapping features, the new alpha capabilities, and some of the individual passes for denoiser. Presets. This is one of the features that was recently added for post effects. To the right of every effect, there's a preset menu. Click on the preset menu, a window pops up. And by default, you'll have a preset called default and it resets your settings back to the default values. Click on the default preset name. For that to take effect, you have to move out of the window and watch the bloom and you'll see that all the values get reset. Due to a bug in Blender, which has been reported already, you have to select the bloom effect again. The all the values are back to the default values. That would be the same case for any other default. You can try, for example, tone mapping. For example, you can just change it more dramatically. Then if you just want to go back to where you were before on the default values, select it, click on it, completely reset. So this is available for every single effect that we have, including lens, tone mapping, flares, and bloom. So now let's look at how to create a new preset. Let's say we want to have a, a preset for tone mapping called blue. Turn the image to the bluish type. We want to increase some, let's say we want to increase some of the values. We want to increase exposure, saturation. We want to call this preset blue. So all you do is click on the preset menu, type the word blue, click on the plus sign, and you can see right away a new blue preset. And that's done. To validate that it actually is working, we can go back, click on the default preset. You can see that it got cleared. And now let's go and select the blue preset. Select and we have now the blue preset already been applied to. Delete the presets that we just created. So we go back to the menu and then there's on the minus sign there, click on it. Preset is already gone. We can click back to default, you go back up. So that's the way you create, delete and reset your preset values for individual post effects. So the two new features that were added is the blur and the sharpen. You can zoom in a little bit more. In this case, sometimes it's to see the effect more clearly, it's better to have the denoiser on with blur. It just blurs the image. Sharpen, it gives you a little bit clearer detail. You can see everything gets sharper. Sometimes you can also combine a little blur with more sharpening. Or another option is you can also use blurring for animation where you want to increase and decrease a blur effect on your scene. So that covers the, those new features for tone mapping. Another new feature that just got added recently is support for film transparency for post effects. Allows you the background to be fully transparent with the objects that you have. This is great for creating decals, sprites, animation when your background is changing and you want your main object to follow with proper transparency, parallax and other features. Here we have a bloom effect and I'll start first with Eevee just to show you the difference between this is K-Cycles, this is Eevee. I have enabled the EV bloom and you can see I have film transparent on and we'll hit render. So in the composite, it looks like the bloom is applied. But now if you look at the alpha channel, there's no bloom. So the transparency for the bloom effect is completely not being processed at all with EV and it's lost. There are ways around it using the compositor and nodes and setups that obviously are more involved and not doesn't work necessarily in all use cases. The same situation is for cycles, when you use the, the glare node by itself, you it will not have at all the alpha. It would have to be also processed with more complicated nodes set up and other issues involved. So there's no simple direct support available. So now let's change the slot to number two. Now let's change the render engine to cycles. I've already have set up the K cycle, so you can see it's even, it's a better bloom, more fuller and detail with the K cycles bloom. We'll do the render for it. So now compare the alpha channels between K cycles, post FX bloom and EV. And that would be the same case for regular cycles glare node. So you can see it's, it's a really nice full bloom effect on the alpha. Important thing also to remember is that when saving this post FX with transparency to save in a format it supports transparency and the full dynamic range. Don't use PNG 
use OpenEXR. Make sure you can use RGB A, A for alpha. So you'll have your transparency channel there. Float half and zip codec for higher compression. Float half will reduce the size of your image in half. And then save to any file name you want and you're ready to be using other applications. To test the transparency from the PostFX K-Cycle Lex, we'll be using KitOps Paradox, a great new add-on that just got released by Chip Walters. It creates Paradox images and notes it up, and the rendering is all done with film, film transparent, so it requires proper use of the transparency on the alpha channel. There's a link in the description if you're interested in, in this great new add-on. So I have loaded the logo scene that we had just seen previously. Here's the basic setup. The logo is there with all the bloom effect. Definitely is working on this logo neon. What we're going to do is render, check to see if the proper transparency from, from case cycles works. Click render all. Gotta wait until the blue color changes to regular gray. And now that it's finished, now we can create a cross map, which what it does on the cross map uh, by bring, bringing up the image editor that just created cross map image. And lastly, we click on create material and object. The bloom on the logo appears, the neon, you can see it goes up, you can see that beautiful bloom effect through the transparency showing really nicely. You can also check a cross map and, and you can see bloom alpha channel. We can look at the alpha channel here and you can see it's, it's all there. Another example of using K-Cycles FX, basically here a more fully formed scene from the parallax. Right now, let's say you want to add some bloom, maybe some tone mapping effects to it. So I've already kind of set up some of them already. So you can select bloom, it shows up, add some tone mapping to make it more of a darker change. Definitely the whole mood of this scene change. You can also adjust, if you want to adjust how some of the intensity of the bloom usually control the intensity here or you can also go directly and control the amount of emission so you can balance some bloom effect is too strong in certain lights you can always increase let's go to 50 or you can also decrease as you can see much brighter or you can make it a lot smaller by adjusting that you can make more or less control the amount of bloom on this scene go back to the kit ops section render all the cross map this great material and object. We have our nicely built cross map. The effects look pretty nice using K cycles effects. The alpha in the K cycles and the post effects can be used in any application that requires transparency, proper alpha channels. This is a great example an application that uses it and it works pretty well with parallax. The last feature we're going to talk about is the Denoser Ultra Individual Passes. So if I loaded a basic interior scene, check the Ultra Denoser checkbox, you see the multi-pass, and then you see individual passes. When you turn this option on, it actually denoses each light pass individually and separately. It can have better results, but it'll take more time. Those passes also can be used in the compositor or Photoshop, or you prefer editing program. Start with test with individual passes turn off, and then we have them turn on. To actually see what's going on in the passes, you need to turn on the light passes. And I've already turned on all the diffuse, glossy, transmission, volume, and others. This thing doesn't have volume, but at least you'll see the other passes. Render first without individual passes. I'll go back and change, first change the slot to, and then go back and enable individual passes and do another render. So now that we have one with individual passes off and one on, on slot number two, we can compare how each pass gets the noise separately. Let's go and start checking diffuse direct. You can see all this noise without individual passes turned on. And when you turn on, it's completely being denoised and clean. Same thing can be said for diffuse indirect. It's very clean here. With that option, you can see all the noise. We can do the same thing with glossy direct. This one is relatively not too noisy to begin with, but it'll be even cleaner with, with that option on. Same thing with glossy indirect. 
see the noise and it gets cleaned up with that option on. As you can see, this option definitely denoises each light data pass individually. It can be used with your compositor or the editors and it could have a better improvement of denoising in your final image. Well, thank you for listening and see you next time.